In this video lesson, we're going to cover how to create a new Windows Forms application in Visual C++. Let's get started. We'll go ahead and click File, New, Project, and we will then select the top section here of the Install Templates, the Visual C++ Templates, so we can see them all. Uh, and down at the very bottom we see Windows Forms Application. That's the one we want and we're going to go ahead and give it a name. I want you to call your first program Visual Hello World. Now we're creating a Hello World program similar to what we created our very first program as a console app, but this is going to be a Visual Forms uh, application, so a little bit different. Uh, make sure you know and browse to the correct folder where you want to save it. Uh, unselect create directory for solution as we have in the past and then go ahead and click OK. Now one thing you'll notice it's different with uh, Windows Forms apps as opposed to console apps is we're not having to go in and tell it to create an empty project. Uh, we actually don't have that option at all. Um, there's only one kind of Windows Forms app and it is looks a lot like this when you first open it. It will open a default form called Form 1. In the Solution Explorer you will see that uh, the program automatically creates about oh, eight different files, eight or nine different files for you and they are located in the Header, Resource and Source Files folders. Um, as I explained in a previous lesson, um, the particular file that we will be editing and working with is this one called form1.h in the headers files folder and it actually is represented by this uh, rectangular shape here this form so this is open we have a blank slate so to speak and how do we begin um, uh, um, designing our form well first of all we need to have a couple extra windows open here uh, in addition to solution explorer and the output window at the bottom you should also have the toolbox open the way you open that is you find this button here the top and click on it that's the toolbox when it first opens it probably looks like this we want the common controls palette to be open and so select that and you'll see a number of common tools that we'll use on our program in addition to that we also are going to have the properties window open I'll just leave it closed for now but this is where we find the button for that properties window here's my form okay my Visual Hello World program um, is a very simple program that contains one button and when that button is clicked uh, it uh, opens a dialog box or message box that displays my greeting to the world. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, quite simply, we have the toolbox open. It might disappear uh, on you. If you want to keep it open, you can click this little um, push pin right here. It'll keep it open. And here's my common controls again. Here's my button. So I simply uh, click on that button and then come out and click somewhere in my form and you can see I, I now have a visual representation of a button. I can go ahead and drag that button, make it bigger, reposition it, do whatever I want with it. See that it's also got a name and that name is button one. That's the default name for this particular button just as the form has a default name, form one. All right, now we need to open our properties window because we want to begin to um, customize the look of this form and this button and the way we do that is through the properties window. Okay, again, the properties window is found up here, um, and uh, click that, and we see down below here uh, another window is opened up, and it's the properties window. You can organize your properties in the properties window several ways, either by categorized, as I have here, or alphabetically. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on categorized, and we can see there's a number of categories here, accessibility, appearance, etc. And what they, the category we're most interested in usually is the appearance category. In there you can see I can change things like the background color, uh, background image, uh, the cursor, the font, the four color, etc. Okay? And also I can change the actual text that is written on that object in the form. Well see I have the form currently selected here and so I happen to be looking at the properties of the form and I see here the text property is form 1. If I find that, and I'd like you to follow along and do this, find that text property and go ahead and rename it Visual Hello World. And once you 
finish editing that by either hitting enter or tab, you'll see that now your form is no longer called form one, it's called visual hello world. So we've learned that the text property controls the text that actually appears on the face or surface of the object. Let's go ahead and see if we can do that again. Let's this time select the button. Now an important thing to learn about here is when I tell you to select something, don't ever double click it to select it. You single click things only. And the reason you don't double click them is because when you do, you automatically create a method for that object and you may or may not want that method to be created in it. So you just need to remember to not double click things. So I've single clicked my button and now we see that the properties uh, that I see in the properties window now correspond to this button. No longer am I looking at the properties of the form, but I'm looking at the properties of this button. And sure enough, I look down at the text property and it's button one. Now I want to say something like uh, click me or something like that on this button and we see once I uh, finish editing that the text on the button now says click me. Awesome. Well we can change other properties of this particular um, this particular button. For example here in the appearance I could go ahead and want if I wanted to change the back color I could go ahead and select it pull down on this menu here. Uh, when choosing colors I choose uh, usually prefer to use the web color palette because there's more choices and I can just go ahead and choose a funky color like that. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, change the color. The four color is the actual color of the text. In this case it's black so I can select that and I could use some other color like that dark blue and I can make the, t the font bold and I can do all kinds of things. The changes to the the text are found here in the font section. You can see some properties expand to show other features, um, other properties. So for example, bold is set to false and if I want to set it to true, now this text is bold. I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking over these properties. You can go ahead and play around with them and um, some of them may give you um, effects that you aren't really looking for so be careful with those but you can see there's lots of different properties especially in the appearance category area that you might want to adjust a little bit in your program. Um, again if I want to change the background color of my form I can also now go back to the form by selecting its title bar at the top and now if I choose the background color now back color we'll see this is no longer um, this is still white because I haven't changed it I can come in and choose web and find a nice uh, bright yellow and we now see I have a visual hello world form uh, that has a background of yellow with a green colored button on it. Alright, so I've just designed a form, a simplest of forms. It has one button on it. As I mentioned earlier, these uh, three buttons in the upper right corner are just a default part of every Windows form application. I don't create them, I don't have to code them, uh, they will work by default in every new Windows Form app that I create. Alright, so I have this program. Now, if I go ahead and uh, save all, which I encourage you whenever you save your program here to save all, because you have lots of files here, you need to save them all. And uh, I'll go ahead and hit the debug button here, which also is found um, in the debug menu. You can also just press F5. You can tell it yes to build it. And as we see, when I do this, uh, my program should build. It might take a, a minute here, the first time. When my program finishes uh, its build and starts debugging, the program opens up and I see my program as a Windows Form application. Now when I try to test this particular uh, application, I click on the button, nothing happens. Well, that's because I haven't coded the button to actually uh, respond to that event the clicking of the button. So I need to do that. So how do we write the code inside the form? Well first of all we have to uh, create a method that controls the clicking of the button. Now, remember early I told, earlier I told you not to double click on things? Well this is an occasion where you want to double click on something. Whenever you want to create a method that will control the event an event of for that object, for example, like the clicking event when you click a button, you double click that object and it creates a method. Watch what happens. Double click it and all of a sudden I get this strange um, uh, text window with a bunch of code in it that I didn't write. And as we see here, um, as I've talked about in a previous lesson, I have a bunch of code starting with pragma once coming all the way down to pragma end region and all of that I didn't write any of that. Matter of fact I didn't even write this method. 
Um, but all the code that I write or edit comes after this pragma and region tag. And it starts with the word private. And we see that I have a method called button one click. It has a list of objects and event arguments. And then after that, curly braces. Okay, and those curly braces are empty. When I double clicked that button, which just so happened to be called button one, when I double clicked it, I created this method right here. Those three lines of code were created automatically. And usually after I get done clicking it, my cursor is right here at the end of that line. So I go ahead and hit enter. Now I'm inside those curly braces and I'm going to write my first and actually only line of code for this program. What I want to do when I click the button is have a message box open and show a message. So I'm just going to say message box colon colon okay those aren't semicolons or colons show and then a set of parentheses okay so opening and closing then back up one and go inside those parentheses and write um, your message inside quotation marks so again I'm just gonna write hello world and my quotation marks and at the very end of my line of code as usual I have to put a semicolon to end that statement it's as easy as that. I've now told the program to respond to the clicking of button one and res show a message box with this message. Let's go ahead and test our code now. Again, we'll save all and debug. Just like that, I have my program running. And we can see that when I test it by clicking here, I now get the response that I was looking for. This is actually another form. Again, I didn't create this form, but it it uh, is a message box and it's contained inside a form, a Windows form, and uh, it has the customary close button in the upper right corner and an OK button for me to press to close the little window or form. And there you go, my program runs, runs perfectly. Now the only way to end this program, to stop it from running, is to click this close button here in the upper right corner. Okay, your first assignment is to create a uh, visual hello world program just like you've seen here but uh, with a little bit of a twist please read the assignment um, as listed in uh, our Moodle course for exactly uh, how to write your program